Well, good day, folks. So I got a request uh, to make a video on how I make my RSO, Rick Simpson oil. So, okay, here you go. Now, just as a, as a warning, this is how I make it. This isn't how you have to make it, and this isn't how everybody makes it. This is how I make it. I make it the same way Rick Simpson did, make the same way Brett Maverick did. It works for them, works for me. Yes, I use isopropyl alcohol. Right there. Yes, I use isopropyl alcohol. Not not alcohol, not um, grain alcohol, not wood alcohol, not ethanol. I use isopropyl. The reason I use this is it's 99% pure, and the other 1% that's in there is distilled water. Uh, I can evaporate off the isopropyl alcohol, 100% of it, but I'm left with 1% of the water. Fair enough. And then I'm, I've got a clean oil product. So what am I doing? How am I making this? What's in here? Well, it's real easy. What's in here is all the crap and junk and shit and bits and shit off of my tray. Stuff like that. The other thing that goes in here are um, rosin packs. If I've been pressing rosin, I'll take the uh, I'll take the the pressing bag and I'll throw that in there also. You can see you can see one in there as well. So basically, I'll throw anything in there that's not burnt, that's got some THC left in it. I'll leave it in the freezer and I'll just fill that jar and fill it and fill it and fill it. And you can see the color that's in there. It's dark green now. The longer you leave it in the freezer, the more chlorophyll you're going to wind up extracting from anything that's still green in there. I don't care because I don't smoke the stuff. It's not. I'm not making the stuff for, uh, for pretty. I'm making it for edibles. So this stuff is now soaked in here. You've extracted a lot of chlorophyll. You've got all of the remaining THC crystals and trichomes that are left on things in here. What do you do next? This is called a, uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll have a laugh. This is called a nut milk strainer. Basically, it's a very small 150 micron um, strainer. I use the same vessel to do my oil every time, so I don't clean it out. I just top it off and redo it and redo it and redo it over and over and over. I have a good lid for it, and it's not going to go bad. So what do I do now? I strain this stuff through the nut milk strainer, taking out all of the um, residual shite, bits of, uh, bits of sticks, stems, whatever the hell else might happen to be in there. So I'm going to do that, and I will get right back to you. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention too. Um, if you're using a coffee filter to do this, which you can, and you decide you're not, you don't want to be real patient, um, you can you can help things along in here and speed them up a little bit. Get yourself a teaspoon, and very gently move the teaspoon across the coffee filter or the nut milk filter, whatever you happen to be using. Don't apply too much pressure because if you're using a coffee filter you will poke through it very 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 easily and then you can just gently move it back and forth because the little screens are gonna get uh, they're gonna get plugged up with plant material I can be a lot more aggressive with it with this nut milk uh, strainer because it's nylon so you go ahead and do that strain it all through and um, we'll go on to step two yeah so I'm mostly done straining this stuff out now um, little tip that I forgot that I should have done first. Rather than pouring your uh, your your alcohol straight out of the jar into there, um, into the into the your coffee filter or your nut milk strainer or whatever you happen to be using, it's really beneficial if you if you have a little strainer like this, and you can pour this into here. If you can pour this stuff through here through the strainer first and then put it into your fine strainer or your your nut milk strainer or your coffee filter it'll go a lot quicker for you if you do that because this uh, the coffee filter that you that you that you put it straight through or the this nut milk strainer it's it's catching a lot more particulate because I didn't do a pre pre filter on it or a pre strain you can see it's got all kinds of bits of shit in there and that's just slowing the process down a bit no big deal just keep at it, being being careful, especially if you're using a coffee filter. So you don't have to do this twice. Especially when you get down to this point, you've got all kinds of shit left in there, and little point, pointy 
sharp things you just don't want to poke a hole through there right now and have to do it all over again so take your time be careful if you want you can you can remove a little bit of that stuff alright so I'm done the strain see the residual that's left in there that's why I say be careful when you're uh, when you're trying to force the the strain on or the force things through the strainer a little bit there's lots of sharp things in there and you just don't want to poke a hole in it so what now do I do with this shit in here this is garbage total it's now it's now it's waste I'm done with it here I have strained out alcohol full of THC what do you do with this next well we're gonna evaporate that and I do the evaporation in my bathroom because I've got a, a strong ev a exhaust fan in there and I can seal the little room off and that way uh, if you do this in your house <coughs> I mean it's not particularly flammable because the, the the concentration diffuses easily it's just the smell is very strong the isopropyl uh, evaporating off is a really strong smell so either do this in your garage or do it outdoors or do it in your bathroom where you can exhaust the smell outdoors All right next step a couple of things I've got here filthy dirty used used a lot uh, electric um, magnetic stirrer heat plate I really should clean it up. It's covered in shit and oil and stuff. But once you get the oil on it, it's it's toast. It's dirty. You can tell it's been used a fair bit. But it does a great job. So what do you do? Well, got a magnet in there. Already, I already have the little magnetic pill in the bottom of here. So you can turn that on. Turn on the heat. Turn on the magnet. Crank it up. So the magnet's not uh, not moving yet. See the magnet in the bottom here? Get it unstuck. There. <coughs> magnet will start spinning in the middle and create a whirlpool. This is good. We don't want the whirlpool to stop because uh, things will stick on the bottom and it becomes really difficult to get out. So you keep that whirlpool going on the top. I have a couple of chopsticks here. I take these two chopsticks and I put them across the top of here. I have a little itty bitty tiny AC powered fan that I carefully place on top of here with the exhaust pulling out. So as the alcohol evaporates <coughs> uh, or heats up, I pull it right off and it speeds up the process dramatically. So at this point, I've done everything that I need to do the temperature for your alcohol um, <coughs> water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit um, fuck I can't remember now if, if I remember right the alcohol isopropyl alcohol boils uh, at 185 I believe it is 100 and no 100 and, or 200 I'll have to look it up but alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water does so when you see the bubbles starting starting in here if you have a heat, uh, if you have a stirrer with heat with control over your heat, maintain your heat at a t at a, at a simmer, uh, because you don't want to actually boil the water off. You want to leave that one percent of water in there. It makes it easier to get out. So we're going to leave this at this point for approximately two hours, and uh, I'll come back and show you what's going on in two hours. All right, so two hours has gone by. You can see I've evaporated. Uh, around half of what's uh, what's in here it's hard to breathe in this bathroom so this is going to be quick um, yeah at this point it'll probably take another hour and a half to get down to where I want to transfer it into uh, a smaller vessel to finish off all right so we'll come back for that all right we're back it's been another hour or so something like that and I think I'm down to enough evaporated off that uh, everything will fit in the small vessel now so I'm going to transfer this into this with the little magnetic stirring thing and put this back on here be right back all right it's transferred over 
just got to get this thing centered so that the little magnetic thing is right in the middle of it and not bouncing off the walls. Okay, that'll basically do it. Whatever. Just keep it stirring, that's all you gotta do. And I will put my, uh, and you can see here too that uh, I've got nothing left in here. I recommend using for your initial evaporation a jar like this or a vessel like this that's Pyrex that doesn't have a lip inside it. it makes it easier to pour it out and get everything out. Same with your final jar. Make sure you don't have a lip inside your final storage jar makes it a whole lot easier to get the product out if you don't have a lip inside. But what I mean by a lip inside is a, is a bump on the inside of the jar. Yeah, a bump on the inside of the jar there that, that would have to run over. You don't want that. So right now I take the chopsticks, put them back on, and I take the uh, fan and put it back on. Now I gotta put the phone down for this. Okay I forgot I don't really need the chopsticks on there. So this is uh, gonna probably take another 30 minutes or something like that to get down to the point where all the alcohol is evaporated off and uh, we'll be back. Alright it's been about another 40 minutes and be able to see there we are done that's totally done the sniff test tells me that there's no more alcohol in there whatsoever it's all gone so we're going to turn that off turn that off use the chopsticks take out the little magnetic thingy yeah you see I can tell that it's done because it's oil and it's viscous like oil it's not dripping like water nothing like that that's oil that goes in there, ready for next time. And there is our oil. You can tell from the color on the side of the glass, it's got, a, got the usual heavy duty yellow green to it, but it's the same product I make every single time. I would estimate there's probably three and a half to four grams in here. Yeah, that'll do me for my next batch of cookies or edibles, whatever I happen to decide to make. So that is how, in a nutshell, I make my RSO. Uh, for anybody who's asked, anybody who cared to know, hope this, this video has helped you out. If you like what you saw here... Do the internet thing, hit the fucking thumbs up button, and smash all those other buttons and shit, and, you know, subscribe and crap and junk and stuff like that. If not, just fucking smoke a doobie and peace on. Have a great day. Keep calm, toke on. Ciao for now. Ciao.